Hey everyone, today I have five amazing makeup products that will help you look healthy and glowy from complexion products to something on your eyes and a bonus product to talk about on your lips. It's my newfound favorite. Please keep watching. I'm gonna take you through from start to finish. I'm gonna highlight those five products as well as a few new finds that I have incorporated into my daily makeup routine. Let me know if you have any questions. Be sure to check the description box for all the products that I used on my face today. Let's get started. Don't forget the full list of products of everything that's on my face or will be by the end of this video is down in the description box. YouTube has changed it up, so look there so you can see exactly where to click. And let's get to number one. First product for healthy glowing skin is an old favorite, the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. I have mine in the shade One Fair. Some people use this as a primer. Some people use this on top of foundation for pinpointed highlighting. I like to sometimes do a mixture of both, but I definitely prefer to put this all over. It has a tiny bit of coverage, but not too much. The key here is to put it only where you want glow. So if you know that you have some oily patches or patches that get shiny during the day, leave that alone. I'm also gonna show you a little trick on how to help with under eye wrinkles. So I just put it kind of striped all over my face and then just go with any kind of dense brush and start patting it in. This is a great product for those of you who just want a no makeup makeup look. It has very minimal coverage, but it does manage oddly to give some evenness to your skin tone. And something to remember, and I'm gonna show you a little trick about highlighting. Do you remember way back in the day when the YSL Radiant Touch Pen was all the rage, not only for brightening the inner eye, but you could use it along fine lines on your face, like around your mouth and nose and your crow's feet, and it was reflecting light and it would almost give the illusion of filling up your wrinkles. Well, we're gonna do that very subtly with the Hollywood Flawless Filter. I'm just gonna add a little bit more in those lines that are a little bit more prominent on my face. There are more and more every day. And I'm also gonna do a little bit, well, it was more a little bit, wasn't it? Underneath my eyes. It's going to reflect the light away from those fine lines and wrinkles and make them appear a little smoother, just a little. This trick and using this product specifically was actually taught to me by a Charlotte Tilbury makeup artist. So that is step one. Let's move on to product number two. Now this product is new to me and this is the new Hourglass Ambient Soft Glow Foundation. I had quite the lesson when I went in store to get this and I'm hoping that I can communicate this to you so if you don't have a store near you, you can feel confident ordering this online. Although one great thing about Nordstrom is their return policy is amazing. But I am, as you can see, very fair skinned and I usually just pick up the lightest, more neutral shade and assume that's going to work. I am actually shade 4.5. So definitely look on their website, uh, at the Nordstrom website, it has all the colors, it shows all the pictures, it describes the shades. Don't just assume you're the lightest or the darkest or whatever. So anyway, 4.5 was the perfect match. It's a nice frosted glass bottle, little pump. And we're gonna start with one. And I will admit, I haven't done a full face of this yet, so we're trying this together. So we'll start with one pump. I'm gonna dot this on one side of the face to start. Now I will say I also have some personal preferences. Being fair skinned, I like a slightly warmer undertone to my foundation just to give me a little more life, warmth to the face. Don't let the soft glow scare you away. It is a very skin-like finish. It is even on top of the Hollywood Flawless Filter, a subtle glow. So it is very wearable, I'd say for all skin types. It blended really easily. I'm gonna try the other side with a sponge and see how that goes on. The thing with this sponge is it's going to shear it out a little bit. And I myself prefer a little more close to medium, I'd say coverage. This still gives really good coverage even with the sponge. Before we get to the next glowy product, there is a product I wanna talk about. One of my most used concealers, rarely talked about, rarely given enough love. It's 
I don't even know the full name. It's the Dior Forever Skin Correct Concealer. I use shade 1N all over my face and I just grabbed a brand new bottle of it. Although I'm looking, there's very little I feel needs to be covered. Hmm. I'd say the Hourglass Foundation did a really good job with that. I'm gonna go ahead and add my contour, bronzer, and powder, and then we'll get to glowing product number three. We are on to the next product to give you glowing, healthy skin. And this product has been in my collection for a while, but I'm bringing it out because I got a couple of direct messages on Instagram asking me to recommend a highlighter that was one, travel friendly, and two, went with all kinds of skin tones and skin undertones. That was an easy one. It's been off the Nordstrom website for a while, so I'm happy to see it back. Perfect timing. It's the Laura Mercier Rose Glow Highlighter, and it is specifically designed to work on all skin types and all skin tones. I have quite the little divot in mine. Another thing I wanna mention as I'm applying it is in the order in which you apply products. Now there's no actual rules, but I like to do bronzer first, and then I do my highlight and I apply the blush sort of in between the two to melt them together and also make it look like the highlight is coming through the blush. So just a little bit goes a long way. Do a little bit here. Don't need to add too much all over highlighter. I have the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. I have the Soft Glow Foundation. I have Mother Nature that will help if I step outside the house. So I don't like putting highlighter above my top lip during the summer because it looks like pers perspiration this time of year. So I skip that, but maybe a little bit there as well. Then we move on to number four, if you're keeping track. And this one was also highly requested. It's from MAC and it is one of their Glow Play blushes. And I'll admit that when I was in store, I played with all the colors. It was hard to pick just one, but my heart belongs to a subtle pink blush. And this is a universal season. It's not just for spring or summer. I will definitely wear this well into fall. I will say if you're looking for the most beautiful, perfect, true peach blush, there is a shade in this collection that is just a true peach. It's not a pinky peach, it's not a brown peach, it is a peachy peach. For me, I feel like that's definitely more of a spring summer shade, so I didn't grab it, but mine is in the shade Totally Synced. You can use your finger to apply it. It feels, it's smooshy. It feels almost like putty. So you can do that, but I do prefer a brush I'm gonna use a slightly denser brush just to get a little more color payoff. It's subtle, which is what I prefer. If you want something deeper or brighter, there are definitely other options. You can also build this. Let's try doing it with our fingers on this side. One more on my finger that way. Look at that glow, so pretty. I think I actually like putting this on with my finger first. It's a lot more pigmented that way. Next is brows. And while this is not an area that you want to glow, I do have a new product to share with you. I have been trying out that new, it's not that new, but I feel like when you're over a certain age, jumping on the makeup trends isn't always the best idea. The big fluffy uh, microbladed brow look, laminated brow, I believe it is. So this part is not new. I'm just using my Anastasia Brow Wiz Pencil, shade taupe, and I'm brushing my brows down first. That way I can really see the more sparse areas. Then I did buy a separate spoolie, and I'm gonna show you why in a minute. And I really should be saving this for the next step, but. Okay, so I'm filling in my brows, nothing special there. And then the next step is the new part. Like, I like this trend. I think you could go a little bit crazy with this trend. I think there's a way to do it over a certain age. And I think the giant, big, fluffy brows are definitely more suited to a slightly younger audience. Um, so we're gonna do just a very mid-range laminated brow. So I am finally using the Anastasia Brow Freeze. And by no means do you need to buy the tool that they sell as well, but I did. I will tell you, when they say the tiniest amount, they are not kidding. I just kind of bounce my brush in and we start brushing. I like to do it in two passes. First, pretty quickly, 
Second time, much more directed, and then we're gonna use the flat end to flatten it to your head. I will tell you why I d jumped on this trend when I did. This was motivated by the fact that I try on a lot of clothes throughout the day and my brow hairs were moving. I know that sounds ridiculous, but that is absolutely 100% what motivated this. Now, I will also say, I am a big fan of trimming my brows, but this look actually works better if you don't. So what I mean by trimming my brows is I will, br I will brush my brow hairs straight up and take a little cuticle scissors and cut the strays, and then I will cut, brush them straight down and do the same thing, anything that hangs a little bit lower than the general outline of my brows. And that gives a very nice, neat appearance, but when you're doing the laminated look, you need those scragglers. So if you wanna try this, keep those tweezers on hand, but put the scissors down. And it goes pretty quickly. I mean, it's really easy. I will say I've been playing with a couple of different brow wax, brow gels, and this one seem, see this one's less trimmed. See how it's a little more fanned out? And then by sticking it to your head with this, I'm gonna try to manipulate this. It really holds them in place. So this side is more what the trend is supposed to look like. This side I feel like is the more wearable way to do it. I'd say for over 45, but let's see if I can make this guy match a little bit better. Now let's get to the next product. So I have had the Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize for years and the original names, original formula. Well, they renamed them. I don't know if the formula has changed. It feels the same. They renamed them and I figure if I've had products long enough that they have renamed the package, it's time to get new versions. So I now have for you Champagne, which is a much better way to describe the color than what it used to be called, it was somebody's name, and Oyster Pearl, which is an absolutely stunning, sort of cool toned bronze. I wore this together the other day, got a lot of questions if I could recreate this, and here I am. So who said you have to leave the glowy products to your face? You can put it on your eyes. So I love using like a concealer, brush or a synthetic flat brush and you just dip in and if you think you need like this is going to be too much i can tell with this in the inner corner yep too much so i'm going to put some on the other eye too and i like to pull it all the way up to the socket line if you want to blend it out you can you don't have to you can use a regular brush, you can use a synthetic brush. I'm gonna show you a trick on why you don't need to blend it out. So I've pulled this about two thirds of the way across the lid. This is a very subtle eye look. It's all about just being natural and glowing and fresh faced. Then you take the darker color, in this case it's oyster pearl, but you can use any combination. And I'm just going to add it to the outer third, the outer corner, and I'm gonna Pull that up into the crease socket line as well. Now I have seen tons of people use the Eyes to Mesmerize products on their own, just a wash of color, one color all over the eye. I decided to make it a little more complicated, but I do feel like it looks best if you have something in the crease to balance it out. So that's when I'm gonna go back and use the same bronzer that I used all over my face. Tilt my head back so I can easily see that socket line and just add a little bit of color to the edges of the eye, basically following my eye socket. All right, I'm gonna finish up my eyes by adding my lash primer and mascara. Again, remember to check down in the description box, I'll have all those products listed, and then we're going to play with some new lip products to finish this off. This is the Too Faced, I think they're called the Coco Bold lipsticks, and if you've watched me for over a decade, then you're gonna remember my deep, abiding love for the original Too Faced La Creme lipsticks. They are still top five of my favorite lipsticks to this day. Unfortunately, they were discontinued probably close to a decade ago, so they are no more. If you remember, list your favorite shades below. Mine were Razzle Dazzle Rose and Nude Beach. Well, this formula reminds me so, so much of those beautiful lipsticks, but has the nice, gorgeous, very modern bronzy packaging, chocolate, if you will. 
I love a magnetic closure. And I went with Milkshake, which I think is described as a nude pink, but it's really a brownie pink. So you're really into that 90s trend, but it is so wearable. Check this out. One swipe. I didn't even do my top lip yet. Hang on. Ooh. Now, a couple things to know. There are some more true pinks. There are deeper plums, you know, the, all the shade range that you like. This does have a strong fragrance, which I adore. It's cocoa. It, it smells very strongly of cocoa and I can kind of get a faint whiff of it. I'm not sure if it's because I'm holding the open container. No, I can still smell it. So if you have a problem with fragrance or you hate the smell of cocoa or chocolate, run away from this. However, I, I love the fragrance. I love how it feels on my lips. And here's something interesting. It doesn't taste like cocoa. Most beautiful cream finish love. But if you want to add a little bit of gloss and you know that I do, I keep getting asked about these products. I use them all the time, guys. It's the Westman Atelier Squeaky, I think Squeaky Clean Lip Balm. It's a liquid lip balm. I'll put the shade I'm using down below. It's a very tiny print. This just adds a subtle little gleam. But there you have it. There is a really nice, subtle, glowy face. It's great for summer. It's great as we transition into fall. These are five beautiful glowy products that will work well for you year round. They work well on women over 45. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.